It. Paul McCartney wrote it, the Beatles. Who? I don't know if I've ever said this on YouTube before, so let me be crystal clear. I fucking love the Beatles. Yes, in that hipsterish way where I think all bands should have stopped when they did. Yes, in that annoying bratty way when I proudly announced that Abbey Road is my favourite album ever made. And yes, I am insufferable when I try to discuss the meaning of I am the walrus very loudly to anyone who will bear my company for more than a few minutes. However, I also wanted to make sure that my love of the Beatles did not cloud my judgement regarding this new British comedy which starts off with a pretty cool premise. Himish Patel plays Jack Malik, a struggling musician who gets hit by a bus during a worldwide blackout and when he comes to, he's the only person on earth who remembers the Beatles. And also the band Oasis and the drink Coca-Cola, randomly. He uses this knowledge to garner fame, fortune, as he rewrites and re-records all of the Beatles' back catalogue that he can remember, whilst also learning about love, life, himself, and being honest, etc, etc. The film comes to us from director Danny Boyle, but more interestingly from writer Richard Curtis, who has one hell of a career behind him, such as Blackadder, Love Actually, About Time, The Boat That Rocked, just to name a few. However, I think the main issue with Yesterday does come from the script. The jokes don't seem to land as hard as they should, the love story, despite this being something Curtis usually knocks out of the park, feels been there, done that, and there's no surprises from start to finish. However, a film like Yesterday can overcome all of that if it makes the most of its premise, but it feels oddly impersonal. Yeah, the studio paid $10 million to use the Beatles license, but if you took the script and replaced them with another boy band like the Rolling Stones, Queen, Pink Floyd, or even One Direction, all that you would need to do is hit find and replace on Microsoft Word and you would have the same movie. The Beatles were not just an influential, game-changing, century-defining boy band, they had numerous distinct phases of their career. There were four of them, all of them wildly different and idiosyncratic. They have their own iconography, they had spin-off movies, TV shows, and none of that is alluded to here. Instead, Yesterday is just a movie about a guy who makes it big in music and has to learn a lesson. The only thing that Yesterday has that's unique is how he makes it big. There's a scene in the movie where Jack gets off a plane and gets chased away from the airport by screaming fans. But why isn't there a homage from A Hard Day's Night in this scene? Why isn't there a scene where he's trying to remember the lyrics to I Am The Walrus so he gets high as a kite and maybe we could have an animated sequence? Danny Boyle could have excelled at that sort of set piece, yet there's nothing like that here. Ed Sheeran shows up in a supporting role playing himself, and in interviews he's been upfront by saying the Beatles inspired his songwriting, so maybe have some fun with that? Maybe Ed Sheeran has no idea where his own influences came from, and maybe he could also have a fun, almost villainous rivalry with Malik? But no, he just turns up, says some funny things, and that's his role. I don't want this review to be just me writing fanfiction, but what Yesterday really lacks is a beating heart and soul. Heck, the most interesting part of the film's trailers just turns out to be a consequence-free dream sequence. It's a bloody cop-out. I've got two men who claim that the songs are theirs. Let's see how this plays out, shall we? But conversely, the best scene in the movie has Jack doing a piano rendition of The Long and Winding Road, but in context, there's no reason for it to be that song specifically. I think out of all of the songs used in this film, only Help has an appropriate recontextualization. But there are some funny gags at the expense of Eleanor Rigby and A Hard Day's Night. I don't want to give the impression that Yesterday is a bad film, and it isn't. There are some funny gags, there's some decent covers, the cast is strong, though I really hope Lily James doesn't get typecast as the thankless love interest, and Kate McKinnon is having a lot of fun as a stereotypical, heartless music executive. But there's really not much else of note here, and some parts are freaking baffling. Like, the movie does point out that you'd likely never be able to release an album today called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, because it's too long, and Jack proposes Abbey Road, the White Album, and a few more, but they get rejected. Instead, the record company wants to name Jack Malik's album One Man Only to show that he is the singular vision, he's the performer, he's the writer, he's the author. But how the hell did the movie forget that the Beatles had an album called One? Like, uh, am I missing the joke here? Uh, is this something that Richard Curtis just genuinely forgot? Because it's not drawn attention to in the film. Seriously, replace the Beatles with One Direction in Yesterday and you have almost the exact same movie. What's even the point of this film in its current form other than to sell a jukebox album and to promote the Late Late Show with James Corden? 
I don't know, I, I feel like I'm being punked here. Danny Boyle is better than this, Richard Curtis is definitely better than this, and the Beatles deserved better than this. And I'm giving yesterday an unenthusiastic two and a half stars out of five. I've been waiting half my life for you to wake up and love me. But I'm a school teacher and you are the world's greatest singer-songwriter. I'm not. Except for you are. Show me.